Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, good to see you. And we're ready to get back in our Father's Word. The book of Acts, telling us how we should act as Christians. Setting the format, if you would, of, of building the church, of forming the church, and how people that we're called Christians should react one with another. Now, uh, the Holy Spirit himself instructed to set aside Paul and Barnabas and send them to Cyprus. Now, Mark and John went with them, but he departed, went back to Jerusalem uh, shortly before the um, lesson Paul is giving here. I, I, want, I want to say again, Paul is teaching a lesson here on Cyprus that, that it can't help but remind you of Stephen when he gave the overall message, God's plan. If you ever want to really read God's plan in a summary, it's the seventh chapter of Acts where Stephen gave it just before his death. But Paul, they're going to try to stone him to death before he finishes this, before he gets away from this place. So there's a great deal running together, but what a Bible study Paul is giving here. And it ensures and backs up the fact that just because Paul didn't recognize Messiah when he appeared, he was still a great Bible scholar of the Old Testament. Because And then after being shown by the Holy Spirit on that road to Damascus, what a, what a teacher uh, he automatically was because he already had the knowledge. And we thank our Father for that. So Paul teaching on Cyprus, and boy, is he giving him a Bible lesson. Chapter 13, the book of Acts, verse 34. Let's pick it up there. And uh, that word of wisdom from our Father, and it reads... And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, that's to say the Lord Jesus Christ, now no more to return to corruption, that's to say to a grave or a sepulcher, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. And so it was that he did give him the sure mercies of David. Why? Verse 35, wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. In other words, his flesh body is not going to turn back to dust. Like David's did and like all of our bodies do. And uh, what did they do and where was he quoting from? Well, he was quoting from Psalm 16. Let's go there and let's pick it up with, if we may, Psalm 16 verse 10. You're going to have it there. And it reads as Paul is quoting right here from the book. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Verse 11, thou wilt show me the path of life. That's not just life, that's eternal life. Okay. In thy presence is fullness of joy. It is a joy to serve him. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And so it was that he would sit at God's right hand, being Emmanuel, God with us, sitting at, on the mercy seat at, at, with the heaven being his footstool and the earth, uh, the earth being his footstool, rather, and heaven his throne. So, um, and how great our Father is that uh, many might say, well, why would he not let Christ's body see corruption? Because people wouldn't have believed he resurrected. If, 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 um, if God had resurrected his spiritual body and left his flesh body here, and this is not sacrilegious, just hang on, then there would have been many naysayers or doubters that would say, he didn't resurrect, there he is. Okay. But so God saw fit, and this is why that he went, as it is written in Matthew chapter 11, to the Mount of Transfiguration with witnesses. And he was transfigured and seen with Moses and Elijah, one being the law and the other the prophets. Okay. Right there with the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of all. Transfigured whereby they would know what happened and why his body was not found, nor did his body see corruption. Why? He was transfigured right into heaven. 
as he resurrected, as he returned to Almighty God. Returning to chapter 13, the great book of Acts, verse 36, and it reads, For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, by whose will? By the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. He saw the grave. He was in the grave. Okay. Uh, 37, but we, but, I'm sorry, but he whom God raised again saw no corruption. He that was resurrected, that is to say Jesus Christ, saw no corruption. Verse 38, be it known unto you therefore, Paul's teaching quite a Bible lesson here, men and brethren, that though this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, 39, through, through this man is forgiveness of sins, 39, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. You got to understand that. That's the beauty of Christianity. I mean, Christians, there are certain ministries that like to put people on guilt trips. And that robs forgiveness. That robs the most beautiful thing of Christianity. That he is able to forgive sin. And that sin is erased. It doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. And people hang on to that baggage sometimes for years. And even making a mockery of Christ's power to be able to forgive sin. Though he paid it this awesome price. People just like to get on little guilt jigs. And, and then some people like to make second class citizens out of certain people where they sit in the church. That's wrong. Very wrong. When God through the Son forgive someone, that's it. It's finished. It should never be brought up again. God doesn't want to hear it. Or it doubts God's ability and the price Christ paid, the price that Christ paid on the cross to see that your sins are forgiven and you have a fresh start in life. That is the beauty of Christianity. Don't ever let anyone rob you of that with traditions of men that make void the word of God and taking you back to Moses' law. Verse 40. Beware, therefore, you be real careful, lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. Um, and um, what does it say in the prophets? And he's going to quote from Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. Behold ye despisers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. They don't believe it a lot to this day even. 42, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So let's do this again next week. And, you know, this is great news to the Gentiles so far. They could only come even in Jerusalem to Solomon's porch. They were cut out. And here's this message that they also can attain salvation. They also, men and brethren, you can obtain forgiveness of sin. They naturally, they wanted to hear more of it. Uh, verse 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, pers persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Persuaded them to do what? To continue in the grace of God. That's the love of God, the unmerited favor of God. That is to say, when you repent, you may not... Uh, 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 deserve it, but he shows unmerited favor. He lets you off the hook. He forgives your sins. Why? He loves you. That's when you're totally repentant and have a change of mind and heart that you love him and want to follow. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city 
together to hear the word of God. Now you preachers wake up. You that especially that claim your congregations are dwindling. What brought the whole city together? I'll say it, I'll give you a hint, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. What brought the whole city together? It was they came to hear what? To hear the word of God. Not some man spewing poetry for 30 minutes or an hour or making slogans, but hearing the word of God. That brought them together. That will always build a congregation. But you've got to put out the word. That's both for children, adults, and senior citizens. They all want the same thing. They want to hear the word of God. Verse 45, and when the Jews saw the multitude, they were filled with envy. I mean, they, were, they couldn't draw a crowd like this. And spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, counterdicting and blaspheming. They were cursing old Paul. Why? Jealousy. Religious community. This is why Christianity is not a religion, but a reality. The truth will do it. Hearing God's word will build it. It will, it will, um, you will, if you will teach God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse, you'll never be hard up for students, okay? Because God's word grows, it's pregnant, it grows and it expands and it gives people hope and truth. Now, I, I have to add that the Eudas means either of the tribe of Judah or a citizen of Judea where all the Kenites went there as it's written in Jeremiah chapter 35. And they took residence for protection in the land of Judea and then began to call themselves Jews. And they were nothing but Kenites. Okay. Now our brother Judah gets a bad rap over that and I, I add that occasionally and well done. It was they that cried, crucify him in Jerusalem that day. Not our brother Judah. Okay, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold. I mean, they, and said, it was necessary that the word of God, the what? The word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you, that you won't listen and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. And so it is. And so it's written. Do you think, do you think this is just a thing of the New Testament? That Abraham was to be a blessing to all nations? That's what the word, that's what the name Abraham means. Father of many nations, plural. That means the ethnicity, the races of the world. Or supposed to, uh, he supp that that would come through him, which would be Christ, would be a blessing to him. Verse forty-seven. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, "What did the Lord say?" Hey, Paul's given a real Bible study here, saying, "I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth." Where where did God say that? Well, it's real simple. He said it in Isaiah chapter 49. We're going to go there. I want you to read it. I want you to know there's nothing new under the sun. Paul, being a student of the Hebrew manuscript, studying at the feet of Gamaliel, knew the scriptures inside and out. Probably the better educated if I would spare Luke, but be that as it may. So, then let's go to Isaiah chapter 49. You're, you're going to have it. Pick it up with verse 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Jacob is the natural seed of Israel, all 12 tribes. Not just the tribe of Judah, all 12 tribes. The house of Israel and the house of Judah to bring Jacob again to him, through, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. I don't know what's yours. What's your strength, or do you have any? What causes you to stick to it? 
What causes you to plow deeper than anybody else? Because the word of God gives you the strength and the power and the ability for God is our strength. Verse six, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. That's, that, that's easy. And to restore the, the preserved of Israel. I will also, I repeat, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, the ethnos, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. There you have it. Christ being that salvation. Verse 7. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer, I repeat, Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One. To him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, Kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel and he shall choose thee, being Messiah, choosing the Lord Jesus Christ. He who would not corrupt in the soil but would transfigure. One more verse before we return to Acts. Verse 8. Thus saith the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people. That's a contract. That's a marriage. To establish the earth to cause to inherit the desolate heritage. I don't, do, you, do you have your inheritance? You're part of it. Are you, are you in line to inherit the eternity? Even if you be one of God's elect to inherit God himself, Ezekiel 44, verses 25 through 28, documenting. You got uh, the will drawn up. Uh, is it in heaven? Is it in the book of life? Have you received that eternal life? Is God your strength? Are you familiar with the word of God? God did not keep these things secret. That these people, Paul and Barnabas, and Christ himself would be a light to the Gentile as well to Israel. And as it is written in Romans chapter 11, if the tame olive tree wouldn't receive it, then we'll graft in some wild olives. Meaning the truth will expand. And the truth is there. God loves all of his creation. But he has the boundaries thereof. That's fine. There's no problem with that. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever, that is any of the nations, ethnos, or Israel, or Judah, could attain salvation in their place, as it is written in Revelation 21, where the nations were over here, Israel here. God and the son, the temple thereof, because it had no temple. They were it. Returning to the great book of uh, Acts, chapter 13, verse 48, and it reads, um, And when the Gentiles heard this, this the ethnos, the ethnic peoples, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. They glorified Paul and Barnabas? No, they glorified the word of God. Um, the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Those that believed obtained eternal life. They inherited. It was written in, in that 59th uh, chapter of, of um, the 49th rather chapter of Isaiah. They were up for the inheritance also in their place and in their time. And our Father is faithful to those that believe. And it is the word of God taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse that brings forth the guarantee that our Father loves his children. And our Father leaves that open for all that will. Let's go with the next verse. Verse 49, is it? Verse 49 reads, 
And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. They did a good job. 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women. This word devout should be translated religious. Not Christian, religious. And the chief men of the city, high muckety ducks, okay, and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. They ran them out. Do you think that's going to frighten them? Do you think they'll go? The answer is no, they will not. They're there to help these people. Verse 51. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them, that's biblical and instructed, and came unto Iconium. That's a little image is what it means. Verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Anytime you're serving God and you see people believing and taking that word and, and filled with that joy, it can't help but joy you also because you have the unction of the Holy Spirit to continue to grow and to take that forth. Chapter 14, verse 1, and it continues. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. They, they were bold. They didn't back off, didn't run, and, and so spake, so spake with great authority, okay, boldly, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed, that's to say Gentiles. They, they just, why? Because it's the word of God, not the traditions of men, not churchosity, which is to say traditions that make void the real truth, the real word, but the word of God put forth. Verse 2, And the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, this is no doubt the Kenites, okay, don't understand, and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. They're just stirring stuff. You know, this is real easy to do if you want to be destructive, if you want to let Satan and the evil spirit enter you, go ahead, all right? This is how it happens. Verse 3, Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. In themselves? No, in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Did you get that? The word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. That law of grace, unmerited favor. God looked down upon them and blessed what they were doing. And, and miracles and healings were performed. Verse 4. But the multitude of the city was divided. That's not unusual. And part helped with the Jews and part with the apostles. We've got a draw here. Five, and when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. And here, this can't help but remind you back of Stephen. Okay, they stoned him to death. Uh, and, and I might also add, what, what a fantastic religious community we've got going here. They're murderers. Any, anybody that murders in the name of God is a misfit, a terrorist, a corrupted organization. Verse 6. They were aware of it. They, they learned about it and fled unto Lystra and Derby. Cities of Lycaonia, um, and uh, Lycaonia means wolf land, so that might give you a little clue here where we're headed. And unto the region that lieth round about, and um, verse 7. And there they preached the gospel, always bringing forth that word of God, okay, the good news. 8. And there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, 
who never had walked. I mean, this was obvious. Everybody in the neighborhood knew it. He, he crippled from mother's womb, had never taken a step in his life. And here he sits. And um, verse 9, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. He knew it. He could sense it. The faith was there. What does he do? Verse 10, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet, and he leaped and walked. That faith and, the, and uh, the belief in the Lord Jesus Christ touched him, and he walked. Verse 11, and when the people saw, that Paul, saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of like a, uh, like a Naya, Wolfland, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Uh, you got to understand, these are heathen. And, and they're used to heathen worship. And they're not used to worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ or our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay? And what they're doing here, they say the gods have come down and they're in human form here with Paul and Barnabas. Only they don't call them Paul and Barnabas. What do they call them? And they call, verse 12, and they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. And that was their supreme orator in their heathen belief. Now, I, this, this is a, this, this you want to make note of. Don't ever let people, when you're taking God's word, for, word forth, don't ever let people worship you. Uh, God resents that. And pretty soon, you have someone believing it isn't the word of God that's doing this. I be doing it. Okay. And that you can fall into, dis, your ministry can fall in great disrepair if you start taking credit for God's work. Number one, Father doesn't like it. He wants people to know that He is God, not you. You're a servant. And you got to keep that in mind. Always remember, who, who healed the man that had the crippled feet there. From birth, from the womb. Who did it? The Word of God and the faith in God brought him up and touched him. What are Paul, what's Paul going to do about this? Verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, you think this is a holy man? I said priest of Jupiter which was before their city brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. I mean, they've got flowery crowns drawing up here. They're going to put these flowery crowns upon Paul and Barnabas. Won't they look sweet? And, I, and, and they got oxen there that they're bringing so many. I mean, the gods have come. What's Paul going to do about this? 14 which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out, 15, and saying, Sirs, why do you these things question? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Get away from this nonsense. Get away from false teaching. Get away from false preachers. Get away from false shepherds. Pay attention to your heavenly Father, which made heaven, God, living, the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. That's who you want to worship. He said, we're, we're people just like you. We have the same passions. We get hungry, we get cold, we get hot. Okay. We're, we're just human beings. Verse 16. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. 
uh, nations being ethnos, okay? Walk in their own ways, what? Heathen ways. 17, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. God takes care of even the wild animals. 18, and with these sayings, scarce, let's put it scarcely, restrained they, the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. I mean, they really wanted to worship in a bad way Paul and Barnabas. You know, don't ever fall into, the, as, as a minister or a teacher or just a witness of God's word, do not ever fall into that trap of thinking you're something you're not, okay? Or, or leading people to believe you're something you're not. It is dangerous. It is one way that God will withdraw every talent. He, he won't redraw the talent, it'll be dead, okay? Because God gives gifts without uh, re repentance of Romans chapter 11. But he can sure shut you down if you get start getting on ego trips and allowing people to give you credit when the credit belongs to God. Do you understand? It is God that blessed these people. If Paul and Barnabas take the credit for it, these people don't know God. They don't get to know their heavenly father. So Paul and Barnabas are not going to allow that. They want them to know that the living God who created heavens and earth, it is he that brought forth this word. It is his word. How precious it is. Well, we're going to let that kind of rest there until the next lecture, but you're going to find out Paul's going to get some pretty rough treatment before this is over with. And you will see that alignment with Stephen. You know, but still, God's in control. And God takes care of his own. I believe that with all my heart, that he is able to strengthen us, to allow us to accomplish what it is that should be accomplished in the word of God. All right, don't miss the next lecture. We got to get there. It's going to get a little tough around there, but hey, we always win. I've read the back of the book, okay. All right, God bless you. You listen a moment, won't you please? The Mark of the Beast on CD is our...